everyone ham here in today's video i'll be taking a look at virtual desktop for the quest 3 i won't be going over every setting this will just be a quick start guide to get people up and running as quick as possible i'll also cover the new integrated virtual desktop openxr runtime and showing you how you can get a performance boost for supported games if you're looking for a wide pc vr setup guide check out my recent video covering the metalink for quest 3 for seated players i would still recommend trying wide link first as it's the most straightforward to set up and still provides the best visual experience in my opinion okay so the first thing you'll need to do you'll need to buy a copy of virtual desktop for the quest 3 from the meta store so you can either do it from the web page or within the headset please note you will need this version specifically for the quest 3 you can't use the classic steam version as that's for wired virtual desktop sessions only so for all the features we'll cover in this video this applies to the one that's on the store the good news is if you use my referral link you should get 25 percent off the current price and it helps out the channel okay once you've purchased virtual desktop you'll need to download it install it on your quest 3. the next thing you'll need to do is connect to a wi-fi router so the one i would recommend is a tp-link axe 5400 also known as the archer axe 75 which is a wi-fi 6e router and this makes the most of the new wi-fi 6e capability of the quest 3 you can run it in 6 gigahertz mode which will give you a bandwidth of 2.4 gigabits per second once you've got your router you'll need to make sure you've got a good quality ethernet cable and run this directly to your gaming pc so once you've got this connected up you'll need to download the virtual desktop streamer app which is also available for free on the virtual desktop website. So I'll leave a link to this in the description below. So you'll just need to download and install this on your PC. So once you've got the virtual desktop stream app installed, you'll just need to configure your account details. So in my case, I've just got the Oculus account configured. So you just click change, enter details there, hit click save. Bindings, you can leave that as defaults. So under options, this is where the main configurations of interest I'd say are. So the first most important one will be the preferred codec. So with the Quest 3, you can now enjoy AV1 10-bit, which is one of the newer codecs and provides a really good image quality at a small amount of data usage. So if you're playing flight sim games or games where there's slow pace and you want the most accurate colors possible, then go for the AV1 10-bit. Note this will only apply if you've got a recent NVIDIA 4000 series GPU or a latest gen AMD GPU. Otherwise, you should be able to use the HEVC 10 bit. If you're not playing a sort of slow game and you're playing something that's very fast paced, use the H.264 Plus codec. This performs very well in fast moving scenes. So I'd just use those two as the guide, either go for the AV1 for Quest 3, for slow moving or for fast moving, use H.264. Next thing you'll want to change is the OpenXR runtime. So by default, it'll be set to automatic. If you're playing any Steam VR games, you could just leave it on automatic or you can specify you want it to run with Steam. However, if you're running any OpenXR games such as Microsoft Flight Simulator, DCS World, iRacing, or any others then you'll want to switch it over to vdxr mode okay so once we're all set up we'll want to launch virtual desktop so in order to bring up the settings once you've got the application loaded you just need to double tap the three lines on the left controller the next setting which is the main one we will be interested in for today is the streaming tab so the first option here vr graphics quality this is similar to the metalink render resolution so because I'm using a 4090, I've got this set to godlike, but you can adjust this according to the spec of your PC. Essentially what this is doing is just changing the render resolution that's presented to the different games that you'll play. Uh, frame rate, as, an, as the name suggests, you can change the frame rate displayed in VR. I usually only go as high as 90. You can go up to 120 if you wish. Just keep in mind that when you're running at 120 FPS, you're squeezing more frames through the same available bit rate. So the quality drops the higher up you go in terms of the video compression. I don't like to go higher than 90 FPS just from a codec and image quality perspective, but the option is there. In terms of VR bit rate, 
because we deselected the auto adjust bitrate and we're using the H.264 codec in the desktop streamer, we can go all the way to 500 megabits per second. If you find it's lower than this um, and you've got it on H.264, it's because you've got that automatically adjust bitrate setting enabled and that's what the application thinks is suitable for your network. However, if you know you've got a really fast network and you're sat right next to the roost like I am, you can try put it up to maximum. Just keep in mind you may experience stutters and problems if your network's not up to it. Synchronous space warp. This is very similar to asynchronous space warp on the PC, but this is done by the headset itself. Personally, I like to have this off and try and run the game at native uh, frame rates, but the option is there. Same rules apply for asynchronous space warp. I'd either go for it being always off or always on and rendering half the number of frames and the other fake frames being generated by the headset rather than automatic being selected because what will happen is if you're going above and below the threshold, you'll get stutters as this kicks in and out. Under advanced options, so Snapdragon game super resolution, I believe this only applies to resolutions below Godlike. This is upscaling done by the XR2 chip on the headset. Video buffering, as the name suggests, reduces occasional stutters but can increase the latency slightly. But uh, I find that works quite well. The other important thing that you'll want to have on or off, uh, well, on to begin with, is the show performance overlay so you can see all the performance metrics when you're running a game. So that's it for the main settings. The first thing we'll do is just launch SteamVR. So we've now got SteamVR loaded up and as you can see here we've got the uh, performance information along the bottom and you can see we're connected at 6 GHz. It's running at 1.9 megabits per second, it's usually around 2.4. Um, it could be because I'm using SideQuest with another link cable to my PC at the moment. Um, but yeah, that is usually a bit higher than what's showing there. But the important bit of information you want to look at when you're playing a game is the game encoding, networking and decoding latency times. Um, ideally, you want anything under 50 milliseconds, 40 is even better, and under 30 is really good. Um, depending on the bit rate, the lower you go with the bit rate, the lower the latency will be. So if you press the cog here and go to the general tab, you can see the refresh rate detected by SteamVR and if you press custom from auto you can see the resolution SteamVR is detected so this will reflect the resolution godlike mode refers to so I tend to leave the global one on 100% if you want to make any changes click on video and then per application you can set different render resolutions so this is the location to either increase the resolution further or reduce it if you're having any performance issues. So we've got the OpenXR runtime on SteamVR mode, which for games that don't support OpenXR, this is the mode you'll typically want to have this in. But if you know the game that you're about to play does support OpenXR, then you'll want to put it to the VDXR OpenXR runtime. Now, if you're not sure if the game does or doesn't support OpenXR, your best bet is going to the OpenXR Toolkit website. And this is the same place where you'll download the OpenXR Toolkit application. So I'll leave a link to a video that goes into this in more detail. I've covered this before previously, but uh, in short, this uh, tool lets you enable features such as foveated rendering and has a um, upscaler built into it so you can use this to get a bit more performance out of OpenXR games. So if you go to this web page and hit the download link you can download the OpenXR toolkit here, run the installer and in terms of apps that are supported just click on supported applications there's a list here so as you can see DCS World is listed, iRacing is listed as long as you run it in OpenXR mode, uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator uh, 2020, Pavlov, and so on. So there's a, there's a few there, but obviously it's not a very long list. Uh, it is possible to run other games that aren't OpenXR native, and that's via another library called Open Composite. So I'll leave a link to this in the description below. You'll need to go to this web page and uh, download the application. So if we go down to here, download the Open Composite Launcher and this is this little device here that lets you switch between 
running the game in SteamVR mode if it's a SteamVR game or Open Composite. And if you're wondering which games have been tested with Open Composite, there's a compatibility spreadsheet here that you can open up. And here's a list of games that have been tested. So you can see um, a set of course competitions on there that we have tested, so set of Corsa. Now, Automobuster 2, this is the one game that says it's not possible to run it on an Oculus device because it detects it and forces it to open up in Oculus mode. However, using virtual desktop is a workaround. So you can actually run this now using the VDXR runtime. So there's a bunch of games in here. You can have a look. Uh, just note that in terms of support, these are two different uh, bits of code and applications with their own discord. So if you have any problems with open composite, go to the open composite discord. But if you've got a question about the open XR toolkit and you know, it's one of these games, then you can raise a question on the OpenXR Toolkit Discord and I have a link at the top there. Okay, now that we've got the switcher enabled, we're going to rerun a set of Corso Competizioni. And we want to make sure you click the Steam VR mode, but it is going to be actually running via Open Composite as if it is an OpenXR runtime game. So we can tell we've got the OpenXR Toolkit up and running. And in the bottom corner, it says runtime VDXR. So, you know, everything's working correctly. So what I'm checking now is override resolution set to no. So we're not changing the resolution. Uh, we've got some sharpening enabled to uh, clean the picture up. Foveator renderings off. So we'll just uh, exit here. So there you go, hope you found this video useful, don't forget if you did leave a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next one.